everything in front of his eyes is crumbling for Justin Trudeau. You have an upcoming interview that's, that's Tucker Carlson is facilitating with Justin Trudeau's own half brother. You have the coalition is coming to an end with people from the NDP that are literally, literally quitting. They're resigning as NDP MPs and or they are walking across the floor and they're switching to the conservatives. You have people heckling Justin Trudeau everywhere. You have international like widely recognized people that are not from Canada that are speaking about Justin Trudeau in a negative way and doing the opposite and actually endorsing Pierre Poiliev and the polls are just not looking favorable for Trudeau so all great news welcome back to another video everybody this is gonna be an awesome one we have a lot of things to cover we have a bit of an endorsement to pierre polyev from joe rogan on his podcast we have an update from toronto police on the ongoing palestine protests and how much that is costing taxpayers money we have justin trudeau recent press conference updates we got a whole lot of things to cover in today's video but before we get into it i do want to encourage everyone to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet already it does really help Help grow the channel as well as turning post notifications on it just make sure that you can actually be notified of upcoming videos you can get a push notification to your phone or an in-app whatever it is it's just that little bell icon it'd mean a lot if you uh turned that on and before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video i do have a message from today's sponsor i want to thank today's sponsor private internet access we have teamed up together and they are willing to offer my audience 83% off by using code sunshine, which can be found linked down in the description or the pinned comment below. There is a massive amount of censorship that's happening around the world, and Justin Trudeau is taking it into his own hands, which is why you need to protect yourself with a VPN. Now, what a VPN does is encrypts your personal information so that when you're browsing on different websites, your info isn't shared. It's almost a way of putting a cloak over yourself, and the favorite way that I go about doing this is with private internet access. Even when it comes to simple things like getting the right information from the news, there is massive amounts of censorship happening. And the only way that you can really get an unbiased opinion is with a VPN. But above and beyond that, if you want to get different shows and movies on different platforms such as Netflix or Disney, and there's these geolocation restrictions, the only really way around that is with a VPN such as private internet access. Not only can you do that from a computer or a tablet, but you can also do that from your phone, which is why private internet access is the best way that I like to go about it. It's user friendly, it's very affordable, and it's a best way of saying F you to the government. Once again, the link for private internet access and code sunshine is linked down in the description or the pinned comment below. And just remember, the government doesn't want you to hide your identity, but you should take the matter into your hands. And that's why private internet access and I have teamed up to offer you guys 83% off. Thank you, private internet access for sponsoring today's video. All right, so let's take a bit of a refresher here on the polls. You have the conservatives that are still sitting at 210 projected seats with a bottom line of 185 and a top end of 229. I've predicted this for a little bit of time. I think that you're going to start to see that slow crawl a little bit further into a bigger lead. I do suspect that the 185 bottom line projections will come closer to 190, 195 right before the summer summer break from parliament which i believe is in like june or something like that so it is coming up and then you, of course you still have 99 percent odds of winning the most seats and 99 percent odds of uh, winning a majority so everything there is looking right where it needs to be but that's just for the conservatives for everyone else not so much you got jagmeet singh who is taking some pot shots at um Anybody and everybody. Nothing is scarier for renters than seeing their buildings. Uh, their building is up for sale. We fought for renters protection fund, and now we're and we've secured the first steps. It means affordable homes will be protected from being sold off to corporate landlords, giving more power to you and less to Poiliev's rich real estate friends. We're gonna keep fighting for you because. What better way than to try and become prime minister by attacking not the government in power, but the leader of the opposition? It doesn't even make any sense. This guy's insane. He's literally in a coalition with the devil, but he still wants to talk about Pierre because he thinks it's going to get him more clicks and views. It's not working, Jagmeet. It's not working. Our plan is protect renters with a renter's protection fund. 
a renter's protection fund. A national renters protection fund let's prioritize people over profits let's protect renters and one way to do that concretely is with this renters protection fund all right so first point of criticism the ndp they're just not getting it whoever's running the socials they just don't get it they see that pierre poliev is putting out social media content and they're trying they're trying to get the same type of reaction because they think that if they just put anything out on social media people will see it and they'll be like yay we like you because we are seeing your video it's actually having the opposite effect for the ndp and the liberals the more content they put out the more backlash there is and you can see that directly through their engagement 199 likes and 838 comments and on on x or twitter that's what's called being ratioed it's not very good and anybody even a normie that's just perusing that comes across that jagmeet singh ndp video would click on the comments and it would just be a barrage just do, 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 checklist and checklist of I don't want to say hatred because that's kind of paints a bad picture, but basically hatred. Like you're an idiot. Here's why you're not working. And here's all the reasons why you will never be in power. Just facts, but not in a good light. So the more content that these people are posting, the worse it is, unless you have a bit of a better message like Pierre Poiliev. But we're going to segue a little bit out of that. We're going to take a look at what's happening with these uh, protests uh, going on in Toronto. So volunteers rolled up pair mats uh, and speakers in place for community iftar at Nathan Phillips Square. So this is a uh, a palace, a pro Palestine protest that they are just setting up right now. And a lot of people have mixed feelings about these pro Palestine protests because they don't seem to get the same level of treatment uh, in terms of uh, from the government or from uh, uh, officials right like the police that the freedom community does what does that mean well when the freedom community shows up to i don't know off the top of my head protest the carbon tax in canada on april 1st you had actual decked out cops as if they were going into <laughs> into a swat operation just fully decked out kitted to the tits and walls to show up and intimidate the protesters. Why would you need to show up with all of that gear? It's like bringing uh, a cannon to a knife fight. But in this instance, there is no knife and there is no fight. It's just Canadians showing up to peacefully protest. And so uh, there's a lot of animosity be because these pro-Palestine protests are not getting met with that same type of treatment right where's the cops where's all the police why aren't the the horses stomping on the people the way they did on the freedom community right well that's about to change that's that's very much going to change very soon because this is bleeding the the palestinian protest is financially bleeding toronto dry single-handedly this is insane so toronto police uh, has attended hundreds of demonstrations since October 7th, which is, I believe, when the the war broke out or this new war broke out between Palestine and Israel. The cost of policing these events has now surpassed $12 million. There are individuals consistently involved in these protests who act as agitators who are becoming increasingly confrontational and violent. Signal. The Toronto Police Service has attended hundreds of demonstrations since October 7th as part of an ongoing operation, Project Resolute. Our major incident command centre continues to operate seven days a week and our officers are attending demonstrations every day, some involving thousands of people. The cost of policing these events has now surpassed $12 million. Toronto Police attend these gatherings to maintain public order, facilitate crowd control, and above all, to ensure the safety of everyone present, be they demonstrators, officers, or the general public. Policing such events in a free and democratic society presents unique challenges. We respect the right to assembly and to expression, but it's crucial to understand that these rights are not limitless. We have engaged in ongoing discussions with protest organizers for many months. We have been clear on what lawful demonstrations include and do not include. Despite our repeated warnings and cautions, some protesters on Saturday refused to cooperate or follow police directives. 
This culminated in physical aggression towards our officers, a serious departure from the principles of lawful demonstration. Two individuals were arrested for assaulting police officers with weapons on Saturday. Holy Additionally, smokes. one more arrest was made this week for spitting on an officer, and another person is being sought for striking a police horse. Whoa. These actions are anything but peaceful. However, there are individuals consistently involved in the protests who act as agitators and who are becoming increasingly confrontational and violent. All right. So I don't know if you noticed in there in this video, it seemed to be that there was a, a couple, at least one towards the end, a quick edit where they, they, they seem to have cut the frame when one talking point and went into another. I haven't seen the full clip, so I can't really provide context as to that. But just keep that in mind. This is why I think that Canada is now going to start cracking down and take these Palestinian protests a little bit more seriously. Um, maybe they, in their mind, they've been taking it seriously, but it is becoming a big financial cost to the taxpayers, right? Wow, who who would have thought that? And so this whole narrative of um, and the animosity points that I've already mentioned right before we saw that video clip of the freedom community feeling that animosity towards the pro-Palestinian protests because uh, they're not getting treated with the same level of um of you know lack of respect i don't want to say respect but lack of respect from the police authorities that's all about to change because it's costing people a shit ton of money so that's where we're going to end on that point and now we're going to segue into another clip here we've got joe rogan who literally endorses pierre poiliev on his podcast with uh with some hosts here we go all right who's talking shit on america like that all kinds of locals. Uh, no, no, just online. No. Shut it off. No everybody one's knows, really doing everybody that. Everybody knows we're number one. Well, how about the, I'm going to leave if this guy wins. You're like, That's but you're my not going to leave. Yeah, but they don't ever leave. They but never maybe leave. They we it's out. great. We got maybe, Chipotle. Everything maybe except PTO. This we're time bad, they'll we're bad go that. to Canada where it's a thousand <laughs> times worse. <laughs> yeah. Maybe this uh, time. How would, you, yeah. Yeah, how would you like to live in Minnesota if it was fucking gayer? <laughs> Welcome to fucking Canada. <laughs> right. <laughs> gayer and Imagine colder. Minnesota, but not. Not cool at all. <laughs> Just gay. Yeah, no Somalians. Yeah. Unless Trudeau's on Halloween. Let's get the right one. Bro, they might get rid of that dude. If they do, they can pull it around. Who? Trudeau. Oh. That Pierre Polivet. How do you say it? He's pretty Pierre sexy, that guy. Hey, how did, did I say it right? No, I didn't. He's very French. Let's also be honest, He's dude. He's brilliant. We've He's been trashing, smart. We've been trashing Canada because of how gay Trudeau is, but... Canada does fucking rock. Canada rules in the summer. Canada is one it of the all time. Rules. Canada, oh, you oh, you twenty in there? You son of a bitch. bitch. <laughs> He's pissing in Bud Light cans. This dirty bitch. Ew. <laughs> Yeah. Should I make this part of your new campaign where I piss in bottles? Here, why don't you yeah, yeah. try to ruin my campaign, you little nasty right. motherfucker. Right, use this whiskey bottle. Piss in that whiskey. Don't over. piss in that. Don't dig a cat. Get a bottle. Piss in it. Piss in the bottle. No, don't yeah. piss in the bottle that's half full. Don't oh, make yeah. it. Someone might drink it, you monster. Don't make Good it point. taste better. <laughs> you didn't the Get a bottle off. online. <laughs> piss in it. <laughs> But that's, yeah, that's the, no, the, the line. Rocks, dude. Well, yeah. Toronto's a fun town, and Vancouver's fun. Good, yeah. good crowds. That's good the, crowds, good chicks, good drugs. That's what, everything rules in if Canada. If you bring up uh, Trudeau, though, they go apeshit. Who brings up the government? Can you imagine I being in his... This is awesome for Canada, for Joe Rogan and uh, his guests to be endorsing Pierre Polyev like that. I mean, not directly, but just speaking in positive light. Uh, because he, whenever Joe Rogan has talked about Justin Trudeau, it's never, ever, ever in a good light. And part of the reason why this is such a good thing is there's a lot of younger people that watch Joe Rogan, myself included, in, in terms of voting, right? I'm not calling myself a young buck anymore. I'm 30 years old. For crying out loud, I got a kid. I got another kid on the way and sometimes my stomach gets in the way when i want to tie my shoes so no i i understand i'm not, oh, i'm trying not to cry i'm not a young buck anymore but a lot of people that are into mma into ufc right they follow joe rogan of course he's the most popular announcer he provides a lot of value and then he has a lot of fighting guests or guests that are fighters uh, on his show. And so it's tapping into a bit of an audience that may not normally vote or hold an opinion uh, publicly in terms of politics. So this is awesome. It's very good that, that, that these things, even though they're just little nuggets, that they get dropped from time to time.
Everywhere I, 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 go, I, look, I hate crime. Everywhere I go, if I go oh. to Canada, I'm like, fuck Trudeau. <laughs> yeah. I don't go to Canada. I do. Piss I go is all the, the line, time, right? I say, fuck Trudeau. They get fired up. The but truckers hate them. The truckers hate them. Regular people hate them. Historically, Canada is a good country. They go hard, dude. They go They're hard. nice people. They were they a drink. D-day. They were that's, a fucking That's why D-day. they're so subject to this bullshit. Because they're trying to be nice. That's why they're so vulnerable. Because they're trying to be nice. Because they're genuinely nice people. Sorry. Like, they, 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 it's cold as fuck up there. People cooperate. They're yeah. nice. All right, I'm, I'm going to get fired up. Uh-oh. All right. Get fired up. Uh-oh. This is... Hold they're on. one of those... Uh-oh. They're Hold one on. of those... They're he is one, a big fella. <laughs> no, they're not that fired up. I might, be, up. I might be dumb and wrong, but... Those are one of those countries that, like, the U.K., like, when they call, like, when they go to war, which they always do, they, have they always call on the bros. It's always Scotland, Canada, Ireland, Canada, Ireland. Australia, all the dominions that are just, like, settler white people. <sighs> We've been making money for you all these years. When they ever <laughs> call, like, when money. they call on, like, Australia and Canada to go to war, they go to war, dude, and they go hard. They've always gone hard. Canada rules. Historically, Canada rules. Historically. Yeah. Right now, they're being gay. I That's think right. Banff is yeah. it has a fantastic history yeah. of combat sports yeah. and athletes. Solid and they, wow. chick hockey McDonald's. players. And yeah. comedians. Rory. Yeah. <laughs> Norm MacDonald. Yeah. Norm. Yeah. The other guy. Uh-huh. Jim Carrey. Yeah. yeah. Those donuts. But Great for donuts. Fighters, <laughs> Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons funny. is rules. Here it like goes hard. Right? Listen, there was a guy. There you go. And we have a good fighter, George St. Pierre. GSP from Montreal. So there you go. There's Joe Rogan's. Uh, this isn't the first time, but one of his additional endorsements to Pierre Bolivar, as he likes to say, uh, for running up against Justin Trudeau. And I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. Are you American? Are you Canadian? Are you pro Pierre? Do you want to see Trudeau out? Please let me know down below. Next up, we have the Conservative Party of Canada's official ex account saying after eight years of Trudeau, housing costs have doubled. Doubled. Trudeau builds more bureaucracy. Common sense conservatives will build more homes. Sign to build homes you can afford. And then, they, of course, we got Sean Fraser in there because he's a housing minister, which, by the way, he used to be the immigration minister. And this, this freaking vertical pita bread avocado toast walking with a face and eyes person here uh he lost a million people he lost one million people in the past so i wouldn't trust sean frazier with uh the, the keys to uh <laughs> to, to anything i wouldn't trust him with absolutely anything uh finally we have just trudeau giving a press conference here saying trudeau is question on why government decided to bypass the alberta government and fund being municipalities directly with its new housing initiative <laughs> he, he just does everything that he can to get under danielle smith's skin which is the premier of alberta for anyone who's watching who doesn't know who that is wondering why your government is bypassing the province of alberta wondering why your government is bypassing the province of alberta and going directly to cities hey he's drinking a juice box water country. bottle thingy why not involve the province more on this the province is a lot closer with these cities relationship wise um one of the things that we knew Uh, was that we had to make sure municipalities could accelerate the building of housing. Uh, That's a a responsibility that the federal government doesn't have direct carriage of. The municipalities with their permits, with their zoning, with their density, are really important players in building more housing. Not just building a new project here with some federal money in it, but changing the way housing is built right across a city. Densification, better zoning, more rapid permitting, better use of public lands. These are things that municipalities have direct responsibility for. So we created a $4 billion, now a $4.4 billion housing accelerator program that actually says to cities, if you are ambitious about building housing, if you agree to four units as of right, things like four stories as of right, increased densification around transit, We will be there to give you this money so you can go and do that. And municipalities are doing it. And we're also encouraging provinces to do that as uh, what we're doing around building uh, housing uh, housing, uh, enabling infrastructure, particularly around water and wastewater treatments. We will be there with billions of dollars for provinces, wastewater and water projects to new subdivisions that will allow for more housing if they remain ambitious about solving the housing challenges. 
If they don't want to build more housing, if they don't want to solve this housing price, the crisis, then they don't have to take our money. But we are there to work in partnership with any province that wants to show leadership and ambition in how we're going to work together to solve the housing crisis. That's what we're there for. We'll work with municipalities, we'll work with the provinces, we'll work with nonprofits, ensure that developers are creating innovative new solutions to all these things. We are there to work with everyone. That's what a team. Canada approach on solving the housing crisis is all about. Wow. So that footage is from our national broadcasting CPAC. Uh, and it's a damn shame that it's pretty laggy like that because, yikes, what, what, what would we possibly do without the government funded national broadcast service? Yeah, they need to update their equipment and maybe fire a bunch of people. I'd like to know what you guys think down below in the comments about any of the, the points that were brought up to this video about the Palestine protests, Joe Rogan's endorsement, or Justin Trudeau's new housing um, angle. That's where we're going to end today's video, folks. Thank you so much for watching. I really would like to encourage everyone to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet already. It does really help grow the channel. We are very close to 400,000 subscribers. and mean a lot if we could actually get there relatively soon. So... Uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.